Hey, so I want to go over page nine with you of our lab manual. It will be cranial nerves and the holes that they go through. So it's listed as foramina, canals, and fissures. And some things to think about when you're thinking about those terms is that if it is a foramen, then it's a hole. And often a foramen is paired because you will have one of those on the right-hand side and one of those on your left-hand side. The other thing to think about is that if it's foramina, then there's a whole lot of them. So there's a bunch of holes. And if it is a fissure, then it's a, I like to think of it as like a funky shape hole. It's not nice and round. Um, occasionally you'll have a foramen that isn't nice and round, but with fissures, they're a little more funky. The other thing is a canal. So when there is a canal, a canal forms a tunnel. It forms a tube, right? So You'll have like an optic canal in the eye. You'll have a hypoglossal canal close to your occipital condyles. You'll have a carotid canal. It's kind of midway through here. Um, but those are some of the general terms to think about whenever you're trying to figure out that last word there, right? So if it's a foramen, it's a hole. Foramina, multiples. If it is fissure, it's funky. And then if it's a canal, it forms a tunnel or a tube, right? Now with some of the skulls, sometimes they get worn over time and those canals start to break apart. So they'll break into other holes. That happens like with the optic canal where it breaks into the superior orbital fissure. Um, another example is like the carotid canal. Sometimes they wear and it looks more like a ditch instead of it looking like an actual canal or a tube or a tunnel. So just some things to think about. Now, one of the things I do with my students is I create a PDF file that has drawings that I have made. And basically you have a map of where these different holes are that we're responsible for in this lab. Now, I will go over those structures with you and those resources. So if you um, have not already done so, you need to go into Moodle um, and you need to download those images that I have that are available in different formats. So the PDF for sure. And then you're also going to end up having a couple other things. So if you look at the PDF, that's this one here. All right. There's two things that you need to add to it. You, they're identified in red on this image. So draw an arrow um, from these little bitty holes here out so we can identify what those are. And at Cella Tersica, you will see that there needs to be a set of holes there. All right. Um, the next thing to do is to look at some of the other images that we have. And um, you'll see that you can stick different colored pipe cleaners through them. And over time, I have done that and taken pictures. And there's answer keys to the, which color pipe cleaner is which. You can do that as well. All right. Um, and those are available on our Moodle course site. I've done that for you. Now, looking at the stuff here, right, on the left-hand side, you have an inferior view of the skull. So I definitely know that it's inferior because I can see that there are occipital condyles on this view. All right, so we're looking at a base view. On the other side, you will see that Sally Tersica is identified. So we know that we're looking at a superior view. We're looking into the cranial cavity. And so we have Sally Tersica. Um, that's gonna be right here where your pituitary gland would be located. And then the extra set of holes that I said draw on that picture would be these here. So you're gonna draw those in. And then where you're drawing that line, it's gonna to connect to here, all right? So when you're going through page nine, sometimes people um, wanna start off at the very top and they wanna start off with carotid canal. And that's fine. Um, I find that it's easier for me if I start off in one location on the skull itself and then work my way to another location. So some people like to start off at the forehead at the frontal bone and work their way down. Others um, will start off in the back and work their way forward. And that's kind of how I do it because it's easier to identify this landmark than me trying to identify another landmark that's smaller. So here you have magnum foramen. Magnum foramen is going to be the largest hole that you have. It allows for the brain stem to come through and connect to the spinal cord. All right, so that's what's going on here. It also allows for um, vertebral arteries to come through. but um, it's easy to identify. Now what you will see is that if you flip it this way, you have your occipital condyles here and there's actually a hole that goes through them. So it's, it's going to form a tunnel 
and it's going to go through that occipital condyle. All right, so you can see it there. Hopefully, you can see it there and here. All right, and so when we're looking at this one, I'm actually looking at that hole there. All right, and one of the things to think about when you're doing when you're dealing with these is that your cranial nerves, you start off at Roman numeral one here, right? And as you progress your way down, you end up at Roman numeral 12. And so that's one of the things that's gonna help you out, right? So if it is a cranial nerve that goes through it and that hole is named after that cranial nerve, then we're gonna be closer to the cranial nerves that are like vagus, accessory, hypoglossal. We're gonna be closer to those down here. And up here, we're going to be closer to olfactory, optic, oculomotor, right? Because we're starting off at one, two, three, and then down here, we're finishing up. Um, when you get to your purple nervous model, you'll see cranial nerves are identified on it, and they're identified alphabetically, like um, by letters. So there, you'll have A would be um, olfactory, B, so that's how those are identified on that model. When you get to the brain model, they're in around like number 100 on the brain model. Don't go freaking out. There's, there's 100, more than 100 things identified on the brain model. Um, but on your answer key, you don't have to know all those things. All right. So when we get there, I'll help you through it. But what you have um, on the brain model, though, is that you'll see them coming down the brain at the base of it there. All right. This one forms a tunnel. If you're looking at page 9, what you'll see is that as far as the ones that can form a tunnel, that form a canal, you have the choice of optic, um, hypoglossal, and carotid. Now, thinking back to what I just said, we can rule out optic, right? Optic's going to go towards the eyes. It's definitely not one of the cranial nerves that are um, lower down on your list. You know it's not that one. So you're left with the other two choices. And out of those two, your best bet with this one is that it's going to end up being your hypoglossal canal. So on here, you're going to type in hypoglossal canal, All right? So then you can go to your next one. So it's a large hole. I find that that hole is kind of kidney bean shape. Um, so I have my purple one for hypoglossal. And then my next hole is right here. All right, so it's that hole. It's a bigger hole. This one is going to be the jugular. All right, so jugular foramen or foramen jugular, and that's going to allow, I'm just going to abbreviate so we can get through it a little bit quicker. Foramen jugular, um, that's going to allow for the, the jugular to go through. Then if you um, are talking about blood vessels, your next blood vessel would be the carotid. So you have to be on an inferior view. You have to look at this side of it. So you have to see those occipital condyles, and then you will see a little hole lateral. It's this one here. If you were to try to push something through it, it would come out at this bigger hole here, but it, it's kind of tricky to do that. Um, but you can kind of see where, where that happens. Um, it's hard, hard to get to it from the top. So I would definitely look at an inferior view for it. This is where the carotid will come up um, and then come through here, all right? So look at an inferior view on your paper, all right, a base view. And I'm just going to abbreviate and put CC for carotid canal. So it forms a tube, all right, so that makes sense. It's canal. Your next one that we're going to talk about, let's go to the side of the head. If you look at the side of the head, right there where you would use like Q-tips to clean your ears, that you're not supposed to do. It is external, right? It's auditory. It's also known as acoustic. It can be a canal or you can call it a meatus. They're interchangeable terms. So auditory and acoustic are interchangeable. Canal and meatus are interchangeable. All right, so that's what you have on this one. If you have an external, chances are you have an internal. So when you flip it around, your internal one, you cannot put a pipe cleaner through it, right? There's some bones and other structures in the way, but it would be this one here. All right, so you have an internal. It's right there along that ridge. All right, so it's that one there. So with that one, you can identify down here. Here's how I remember this next set. All right, so if cella tersica is that little car seat that protects the pituitary gland, imagine that you are cella tersica. 
right, that you're the pituitary gland and that you're sitting in your little car seat. Lateral to you is a hole. So if you, right where you would like buckle your little seatbelt, there's a hole and it's lateral to you. Lateral, it's gonna be lacerum. So lateral is lacerum. The next one over, all right, so work your way lateral. Lacerum is lateral to you. The next one over right here has an oval shaped. So if you look at them, it's oval shaped, all right? Are you seeing that oval shape? So that oval shaped one is listed on your list here. Because it's oval shaped, it's known as foramen oval or ovale, all right? And I identified this one as lacerum. Um, with foramen lacerum, you're gonna have to draw another line to him um, because we drew in those extra squares there and forgot to do that. Um, the next thing, right, working lateral is that there is a very, very small one. I like to say that it's super, super small. Right, so lacerum is lateral to you. Oval is the oval shaped one. And then you have this super, super small one. Super, super small. See how little that thing is? All right, so that super, super small one is spinosum. So super, super small starts with an S. It's easy to remember. All right, so you have that one. And if you're looking on your list on page nine, you're like, I don't see this one. Look further down that list, all right? And you're gonna see that you have frame and lacerum. And then next to it, it says spinosum. So let's just write it out. All right, um, and if you're like, what are you talking about page nine? This is what I'm talking about on page nine. So remember you have the name of the cranial nerve, of the um, hole, I'm sorry, and then you have what goes through it. So carotid canal has carotid arteries through it. Olfactory foramina, you have the olfactory nerve axons that are gonna run through that. And then it identifies which Roman numeral it is. All right, so let's go back and look at this one more time. Um, from here, we are gonna head to, before we get to the eye sockets, let's just go ahead and do this one. Here you have your olfactory foramina, right? Olfactory makes sense because olfactory is for smell. It's right above the nose, foramina, right? And now we're looking um, at rotundum. So cella tersica, you'll notice below it, um, below the eye sockets, there is a hole that runs anterior. All right, so you go back to Zella Tersica, there's that hole there. Can you see it? All right, it's round, and because it's round, I like to think of it as being rotundum. So that's going to be over here. All right, and then you're to your eye sockets. So the eye sockets aren't that bad at all, all right? So if you're looking at the eye sockets, there is a hole that's very, very medial. Right, and it's it's a nice round hole and it forms a tunnel. Because it forms a tunnel, we know it's a canal. Right? So that's this nice round hole. It's very, very medial. And then there's a funkier shaped hole. So my nice round hole will be purple. And then there's a more funky shaped hole. And it's the funkier shaped hole on top, so it gets superior because it's on top. And that's what you're looking at. And so the purple one that I just showed you is your optic canal. That's that medial hole. And the funkier shape hole is gonna be a fissure and then you know which fissure it is. Because you only have one that you have to know. Sorry. Right. Your superior orbital, because it's in the orbit of the eye and it's a fissure. All right, you have some that you can only see from the bottom, right? Carotid canal. Some that you can only see from the top. Um, the ones that you can only see from the top are like rotundum. Then the eye socket ones, you're gonna have the optic canal, superior orbital fissure. You can only see olfactory foramina from the top. Internal auditory meatus from the top. External auditory meatus, you gotta see a lateral view of it, all right? Um, I'll run through a couple pictures with you just so you can see some more. All right, so in this case here, when we're looking at this picture, the black would be the olfactory foramina. 
you have the purple here is lacerum, the orange is oval, the green is spinosum, the internal auditory meatus is in pink, my jugular is going to be in yellow. Okay, that's what we're looking at in that picture. Here's a closer view of that. So you can see top right hand side green is spinosum, the darker green towards the bottom is hypoglossal, jugular is in yellow, oval or ovale is in orange, purple here is lacerum, and black again are those olfactory foramina. An inferior view of those same structures, All right? That's not hard. You've already, we've already discussed them. You should feel okay about that. But I'll go through them one more time with you. The dark green is hypoglossal. The yellow is jugular. Your carotid is, so it is unique here because you can only see carotid from this underside. So carotid is there in blue. The lighter color green that you see is spinosum. Lacerum was purple. Oval is the orange. Closer up image of those that we just went through. All right, remember they're paired. So you should be able to see them on both sides. So rotundum in this picture is pink, and then your optic canal is the blue, so it's the one on the right, and your superior orbital fissure is that purple color. So here you can see um, you have your nasal bone to the far left here. So that's the nasal bone, so we're looking at a left eye because this is medial. Circled here for you is your optic canal, your superior orbital fissure. I have a line identifying where it is here on the left. On the right-hand image, you can see the superior orbital fissure in purple, and the optic canal is the one in blue. Those cranial nerves, we'll talk about them more next week, so that's one of the things I'm working on. So that's a drawing for you. Um, you'll want to get a copy of this cap that we have for the purple nervous model. But as far as cranial nerves, we need to go over with the functions of those and I'll do that in another video. But at least you know now which holes they go through and then what the other holes are, all right? Um, continue to study this stuff, stay on top of it. You will have um, a final exam coming up and this is some of the stuff we're gonna cover with it. All right, you guys have a great day.